go through another big one. The LSU Tigers. 10-3 last year, 5-3, a very unexpected 10-3. Uh, returning starters, 7 back on offense, 8 back on defense experience. Number 19 in the country returning, number 1 in the conference. That is a far cry from last year when they were like dead last in the conference. Uh, Ed Orgeron, 25-9, and nine, two plus years at the helm. He hired Joe Brady, a 27-year-old offensive assistant for the Saints as their passing game coordinator. Offensive coordinator Steve Insminger uh, impressed people last year, but their total offense has declined every year since 2015. They were number 39 in 2015, uh, number 59 in 16, number 17 uh, in 2017, number 54, but the total yardage actually declined. Even though they moved up in the rankings, they still declined. And uh, they were number 69 in 2018. Four out of five offensive linemen back. Uh, their freshman running back, John Emery, could play quickly. That kid is unreal. Uh, quarterback Joe Burrow like rallied the team last year. That he, is a leader. Yeah, he's, he's just a leader. Uh, top 25 defense every year, starting back in 2010. Uh, they had the number 25 total defense last year. Ton of experience returning on D. I mean, defensive end, Rashard Lawrence, and strong safety, Grant Delpit. Uh, they are back, and they are legit. Absolutely legit. Uh, just NFL talent, right? Freshman cornerback, Derek Stingley. He could possibly start immediately, even over some of these other guys. He is that good. He's really good. Uh, they've got a rough non-conference, but this may be their best chance to catch Alabama. And that's really what it's all about with this that's team, it. right? Um, how is the RPO going to look with this team, with Joe Brady and that that whole new passing thing? Um, is Joe Burrow the guy that started last year averaging about 50% completion rate, or is he the guy that, after the Alabama game, averaged like 67% completion rate? So, like, I could, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to this team for a minute. Um, this is my guys. <laughs> a lot of homerism here. I don't know how to do this. But I can answer why the the offense went down in production every year. Yeah. For the last four years. And it's, it has been very clear. It has nothing to do with any talent anywhere or coaching anywhere except for, and Orgeron called it out, and a lot of people gave him crap because he said he threw his players under the bus. No, he's just speaking truth to what he sees on the tape. And it's all because the offensive line just wasn't big enough, strong enough, fast enough to hang with the top echelon teams. They couldn't hang long enough with AM. They could they can't hang with Alabama. It's why they continue to lose that game. And it's strictly offensive line play. I think this offensive line is way better than they have been the last couple of years. Now they are bringing yes. four of those five guys back. They weren't big enough and strong enough last year to hold Alabama's defensive front. But I also think Alabama did lose some big NFL guys. Hopefully they just don't replace them with what they're going to be freshmen that I replace them with or sophomores, and maybe they're not as big or as strong as they will be one day. And and I think this team is crazy talented. Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow might be the best quarterback that I've seen at LSU in my lifetime because we just don't have a lot of good quarterbacks. This guy is an absolute leader. I don't know that there's any way to measure that other than just watch how the team responds to him. He's a coach's kid, and you can tell – um, I think whatever they show him to do and whatever they do with this offense that I've been working on, instituting RPOs, whatever, he's going he's going to learn it. Yeah. You're not, not going to beat him between the ears. Yeah. You could beat him because of talent because there's, there's 12 other quarterbacks in the conference that are going to be more talented than him. Right. But, right. but you're not going to beat him without working him, and you're not going to beat him with, with, with him making mistakes in the talent around him. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the most loaded LSU teams. I tried going into it thinking I'm not going to have them better than 9-3 and three because I just think that's a realistic goal that I would be happy with when the season started. I'm looking at this thing. I want to write 12-0. and 0, Never going to do that. I'm just not. I, I, know, I don't think that's realistic. But I think 10-2, and 11-1 and is. I've got them at 10-2. and two. Um now, I've got a loss at Mississippi State, but I've got a win over Auburn, over Florida, over Texas like, A&M. The, the, uh, 
that got- Auburn's going to lose both their home games, but LSU is going to lose his road game to Mississippi State. Well, here's here's the reason why to, I think to an unproven Joe Moorhead that that this state team has lost more talent than it's ever had in the history of Mississippi State. The reason being, we're going to lose that game because it's on the road. That well, makes I sense. Think I think we talked before about how kids go up and down, et cetera. Uh, I think LSU is going to win at Texas. I, I've got that. You know, I've got them at sitting at six and zero before Mississippi State. The issue is they play Florida at home the week before Mississippi State, and I think that they are going to be so amped up. For that Florida game because they have lost to Florida now what two years in a row? Yep. Um, or is it more than that? Is it three? No, years? I don't know. The three. I think it's two. It, either way. They've lost to them the last two years, and this rivalry has gotten much more intense. Oh no, it's a rivalry. It, There's it no is. Doubt. It is a real thing. Ever since like the hurricane game that had to be made up and everything, it it has really become a problem, and I I think they will be so amped up and so high for that game that it will be tough to come back the next week. Um, I think that Mississippi State loses at Tennessee the week before that LSU game, and I think they come back super high. So you've got a shifting there, right? So that's why I think that State could win. But would it surprise me if they beat State and lose to Auburn? No. Would it surprise me if they beat State and lose to Florida? No. Would it surprise me if they beat State and lose at Texas? What if they beat State and beat those other teams too? That's totally reasonable. I could see him going eleven and one. Like I've got him losing at Alabama, but everything else is on the table. Like I, I've just got him at ten and two. I, I will tell I'm you, I'm not an Ezra Ryan <clears throat> like uh, believer as of yet. But after last year, like he's got me coming around. All right, so that's he's I, a completely different man than he used to be. Yeah, I was he, I was very afraid of this hire. Yeah. I was honest about that, and and now I'm just I'm just not. I've seen too many other great. Great quote unquote coaches take jobs, and I thought, and I believed in them too. Yeah. Thought they were incredible. They don't scare me. Yeah. Mean, I'll tell you this: I'd have sold my soul for Tom Herman, and now I'll take my guy. I'll Which take is- my guy over Tom, and we're gonna find out in in Texas. But I'll take my guy over them. They got they got better resources, better opportunities to recruit in the state of Texas, and and every advantage you could have. LSU has been better and and I think played better and grown in more areas than Texas has by far. I mean, it makes sense. So, makes sense. All right. 